welcome back to the Great Nutrition Business Podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach. We know that helping your clients become the best and healthiest versions of themselves isn't just about what they eat or coming to the gym a few hours a week. We as gym owners and coaches have to focus on a holistic approach, looking at support systems, stress management, sleep, mindset, lifestyle, and of course, exercise and nutrition. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Basics of Nutrition Coaching, CrossFit Preferred Nutrition Course. In this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to make one step at a time to becoming the best nutrition coach and building an awesome habit-based coaching program. I'm so excited to introduce today's podcast guest. I've known Macy Robinson for quite some time. She is the director of Certified Guides for Story Brand, where she helps hundreds of story brand marketing guides and agencies around the globe with tools and training to help them grow their marketing businesses. I was first introduced to her when I went through the story brand guide training myself and back in 2019. She helped us after the initial training be able to set up our businesses for success. So you can say that she's been around in the ecosystem of helping gym owners for quite some time. I bounced many ideas off of her over the years. Well, today she runs the Story Brand Guide Certification Program, and it's been such a pleasure to have her on the podcast where we talk about Story Brand, the premise of Story Brand why gym owners should really be thinking about creating content, some of the tools and resources we provide gym owners through HSN Mentoring to help you save time and not reinvent the wheel, and so much more. Make sure that you stay tuned until the end where I talk about four questions you need to ask the next time you capture testimonial videos for your clients. This actually came from another story brand agency that we work with, Reverb, who does all of our media. And if you've seen any story videos from us, Reverb has probably done them. All right, we will get to this episode in just a minute. Man, it has been a while and I have to apologize first and foremost. We took a little bit of a break with the podcast because things have gotten so busy around here after the CrossFit Games. Just to give you a couple little insights, we partnered with SugarWad and now there's a turnkey solution for gym owners who want to run a nutrition challenge, but more importantly, want to use a challenge to kickstart an ongoing coaching program. Well, we partnered with SugarWad, then we also became a part of the APN, the CrossFit Affiliate Partner Network to help more gym owners in the CrossFit community. More to come on that in a little bit. Needless to say, it's been a crazy few months, but I am so excited to get back on track with this podcast. Here's why. Gym owners now more than ever need to be thinking about what you're going to do to build a successful nutrition coaching program in the new year. And if you are ready to finally take an informal conversation or nutrition challenge to kickstart an ongoing coaching program, we would love to help you. Next week, I have Lindsay McDonald coming on the podcast, and we're talking about how to take a challenge and build an ongoing coaching program. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss another episode. All right, let's get to this podcast with Macy. Enjoy. Macy Robinson, welcome to the Grow Your Nutrition Business Podcast. Nicole, I am so thrilled to be here. This is an honor to be asked to talk to your audience. I'm excited. I'm super excited to have you. We go way back. I was actually on a different podcast yesterday. We were recording it and the guy asked, what is the most influential thing that you've ever done for yourself and your business? And I said, hands down, going through the Story Brand Guide certification. Mm -hmm. And that's how we were connected. Because after you go through that initial week-long training, you ended up being my guide to get me up and going and make sure that the training was actually implemented after that week-long intensive. I remember that so well. In fact, I was telling one of the guides about you the other day, just that you came in, you knew exactly what you wanted to do. You knew exactly how Story Brand was going to help your business grow. And it was so impressive to watch that you just turned around and were like, here's what I'm offering. Here's what I'm doing. And you were off to the races. And it's just, been, it's been so fun to watch ever since. Oh, thank you. Well, I can honestly say that you were a huge part of that journey, just being able to bounce different ideas off of. And you know, I think 
especially in the gym owner world, we're super passionate about helping people get healthy and fit. We have no clue how to talk about that. Right. And what ends up happening is we just talk about ourselves, which people cannot understand how we can help them if we're just talking about ourselves, which is why I was like, man, I need to go through this, this training to learn so that not only I can do it for our business, but then I can help other gym owners effectively communicate their message. I agree. And I think that's the thing that's so powerful about what you do, because if you think about this industry, it's an industry of transformation and stories are about transformation. The hero starts out ill-equipped, not able to do what he really wants to do. He's got problems he's facing. He meets a guide, overcomes those issues, and is transformed into something new by the end. And I just think that marriage of those two things, of that how story works and the work that you do to transform people, their mindset, their bodies, their lives is just so powerful. And if more gym owners and coaches understood this mm -hmm. piece, they would be able to really attract the people that they want yes, so that they can have the impact that they are, are, their goal is ultimately for doing what they're doing every single day. Yeah. Another mentor of mine, and you know him as well, Rory Vaden talks a lot about how people don't buy information. They buy transformation. Yep. They buy organization. They buy all kinds of other things, but information can just be shared out of order for free, whatever it is you're selling, because what people are buying at the end of the day is organization and transformation. And that's what you guys have figured out how to share and sell so well. Well, thank you. Let's talk about that first for a yeah. second. Cause you know, I think if we specifically look at the nutrition piece, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can look up any diet online, you can look up a meal plan, you can look up macros and so many coaches think like, okay, that's, that's what I'm giving my client. When in reality, no, like that's not what you're giving the, your client because they can buy that online or they can give it to you. And then you're not helping them after they have that piece of paper. Like right. really like your role as the guide is so much bigger in this picture to keep them accountable and support them one step at a time with their transformation. Absolutely. And it is that, that role of a guide, someone who has already been through a transformation, who's walking ahead, showing you the way to go holding you accountable as you try to work toward this goal, toward this transformation. It's really powerful. I love it. Big picture story brand. I'd love for you to give me just a high level or our listeners who have never heard of story brand before, which I, I don't think is possible because we talk about it on all, not all, but on many podcast episodes. Well, high level overview, like what does the framework mean and why should a gym owner be like me? And I need to switch my marketing strategy to really implement the story brand framework. Yeah. Story brand is a marketing messaging framework. It's really all about positioning, helping you position your problem that you solve in the minds of the people that you're trying to serve. So instead of just selling hard at people, it gives you the opportunity to invite customers into a story, into a story of their own transformation. So if you've, if you've studied, you know, the hero's journey or are a big fan of movies, this outline, this framework that you're going to work on either, you know, after reading the book or working with a certified guide in StoryBrand like Nicole is, um, like I was, I now work with StoryBrand HQ as the director of the guide program and helping them further their education and continue to become experts as marketers. But that story basically looks at, you know, there's a customer who needs something, they have a problem they're trying to solve, there are obstacles getting in their way, the next piece you come up with is, you know, how do you show up as a guide for them and give them a plan so that they can walk through our minds love a plan. We don't like to walk into fog voluntarily. We <laughs> want to have steps to go through yeah. so we know where we are, what's happening next and what's happening after that. And then we also like to outline what success is going to happen if you follow this plan or what results may occur if you don't. Like what are the downsides? What are the consequences to staying where you are? And then call people to action, you know, make sure they have a clear call to action to go ahead and experience that success and try to shine a light on the, what the overall transformation will be through this process as well. So it's a seven part framework where you take a look at what you're offering. You take a look at what you're trying to communicate to your customer. And this, this framework helps you overcome the gap of knowledge that they have where you're an expert in what you do, you know exactly what you offer, but when it, explaining it to someone who has no idea what problem you solve, what you do, there's a big gap of knowledge. And I've found, you know, I've, I was a story brand guide for five years before I 
joined the story brand HQ and that gap of knowledge is just really more easily overcome with something like this, a framework like this that allows you to meet your customers where they are. So it's just one of the most powerful tools I've ever found. And when you've done the work to distill everything down to those seven pieces that make up this framework, you can take all of those pieces and use them in the content you're sharing. You can share what success looks like. You can share what your plan is in social media posts and blogs and podcasts all over the place, but you have that foundation um, to build your business on, almost like the foundation of a house. It's really solid. It's sturdy. You can build a lot on it. Um, and, you know, I could talk about it for days, I, but we don't want this podcast to be days long. So, you know, <laughs> read the book, talk to Nicole, like there are lots of guides, probably one in your area that could walk all of this as well, but it's really, really powerful to help grow your business and help people understand what you do when they hear about you and get to your site and all of that aligns and makes sense. And they trust you even more and are ready to take the next step to do business with you. I love it. You know, I, I think one practical tip for people that are thinking like, okay, all of the things that you said make, make sense to me, but what do I actually do? Number mm -hmm. one, put success stories on the front page of your website. Yes. But the transformations, put Google reviews, put people that are talking about your business that's not you, show their their stories on the on the main page of your site. Mm -hmm. Also, step one, step two, step three. So many gym yep. owners, I go to their website and it's like, I have a million certifications and I've done all this stuff and here's how my gym became this physical location. It's like, no one cares about no that. No one cares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, they don't. Uh, so instead, all right, what do you want people to do? For us at our HQ location, they apply for coaching. That allows us to, to capture their email address. And right. then after we capture their email address, they're redirected to a site to have them book a free discovery call. I want to learn about you. In the meantime, there is emails that are going out to them with video content that is talking about a problem they have and how one simple tip to solve it. And there's also transformation videos in there. You know, wow. if you... You talk about like where to put this literally everywhere so that people can understand. People need to hear things seven to 10 times before taking action. So if you're just saying your message one time and think that mm -hmm. people are going to understand how you can help them, there's a, so much noise out there, you know? There is. And this focuses you on making the customer the hero. We actually have a new... Um, way to use this framework in sales. So yeah. you can take a lot of these pieces and use online sales script.com, which is a free tool that StoryBrand created mm -hmm. to create a talking script when you're talking to someone about sales to, you know, organize a, an email like the ones you've described. There are so many ways to utilize this, but the, at the end of the day, you really are about making your customer the hero of the story and their transformation, the point of everything you share on your website so that they understand the reason they don't care when they see all the awards you've won is they're looking for a guide and you're positioning yourself as the hero by talking about how amazing you are. And you can talk about how amazing you are as long as you share it with empathy. Like, I understand where you are. I've been there too. And authority, yeah. here are the reasons that you can trust me, but here's the plan that I have for you so that you can make this transformation as well. And it doesn't have to be really complicated steps. It can be as easy as what you've described. Like, Step one, sign up for a call. Step two, you'll get a customized plan. Step three, start enjoying your amazing, healthy life. You know, that would that would be a plan. It doesn't have to be super complicated, but it helps calm our brains down. Yep. Keep it simple. Take the next step. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Um, all right. So hopefully people understand Story Brand Framework at least a little bit. I highly recommend um, grabbing the book or listening to Don's podcast. There, I've gotten to to know Don over the years. I was at that Write Your Story thing. We talked a little mm, bit about that's that. That's right. Um, so much fun. And I, I think the next step to really talk about is the content piece. So right. once you understand the framework, all of the content that you should push out should be, not all, but the majority should be based on, on this framework. What problem are you solving? Being super clear. If you are trying to solve 25 problems, it's not clear and people aren't going to understand how you can help them. So being nope. super clear, who's your ideal client? What are they actually saying? And I think that's something really valuable to, to look at as a gym owner. If you're doing free intros, asking people, what are you wanting out of this? Like what problems do you have right now? Use those words mm -hmm. so that people can relate to you. So I'd love us to spend a couple of minutes talking about 
content, not just I'm taking a video inside my gym of my eight o'clock class doing pull-ups, like, which is what a lot of gyms do, which no problem about show, show your awesome pull-ups, but if, that's not really helping people understand how you could help them. Why should people invest time into creating content? I think there are so many reasons to do it, but one of the best reasons I know is if you can show people what you do, they gain an appreciation for it and they want to have you do it for them or with them. I have a teenager and I have been on TikTok to try and preview a lot of that content to see if it's appropriate for him to hop in there. And I haven't made a decision on that yet. But one of the things I've noticed that I love about some of that content shared in that space is seeing like, someone make something like someone make a tumbler, like a glass the other day that was covered in resin. Like I've, I don't have, I have no interest in that necessarily, but the, I, but the process of watching what they were doing was so fascinating. And when I went to the website to see how much they were, it was not surprising that it was like $40 because I'd seen the whole process. Um, I can buy a cup for half that price on Amazon, probably less, but I was so invested in what they were showing me that I, it, it actually cemented that value of that object for me. And I think there are so many opportunities in this space to show what you know, to share what you can do to help people transform their lives. So instead of just showing a bunch of people doing pull-ups, you could make a video of what are the steps that you need to take to create, to do a perfect pull-up. Like there could be a whole series of steps throughout an entire week. There could be any number of things to show behind the scenes, what it takes, what you do to draw people into that story of, of transformation of, of any behind the scenes. I was actually talking with another guy this week. Um, when you provide value for people in, in, in advance, you become valuable to them. So just showing what you know and showing what you can do is a really great way to give them that value, get them to start to take some steps toward the ultimate thing you want them to do, which is buy a membership, invest in your uh, nutrition program, whatever the case may be. And they, that value is already secured in their mind because they've watched the content that you've put out. They know they've tried the little things you've shared and they're already bought in and they want to work with you. Um, another story that comes to mind, I remember years ago, um, well, and this website is still up, Don and StoryBrand have a a website called five minute marketing makeover and it's a short three video series where he walks through your website shows you some things you can tweak right away to start to make some of these changes on your website and i heard him say on his podcast years ago he had had people sign up for their online courses their live live stream courses because they got so much value from that free content that they felt like they had to pay for it somehow. So even though they were already utilizing some of the things they had learned, they wanted to pay back somehow because it had increased their revenue. So there's so many, so many examples and so many opportunities to share content that will get people to know, like, and trust you faster and provide that value in advance. So you are seen as their guide, you're valuable to them and they want to work with you when the opportunity comes up and you offer them the chance to do so. I love it. So, you know, sharing those tips, right? Sharing stories uh, about the transformations that are happening. Mm -hmm. If you're unsure how to do this, go to growyournutritionbusiness.com. We actually have Story Brands live event marketing company is our marketing team, Reverb. They're absolutely amazing. They're Story Brand guides and they are fantastic at executing this framework to mm -hmm. capture compelling stories and guide people to get started with the businesses that we go in and, and highlight the gym owners and coaches and clients that are that are transforming their lives inside these gyms. It's super incredible and so powerful. You know, we talked a little bit, you mentioned TikTok, you know, mm. Instagram is a great way, but you know, my mind Instagram and all these social media platforms really need to funnel people so that you can get their email so yes. that you can go into their personal device. And I think so many people miss that opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they send out a newsletter once a month uh, about all the updates in their, in their business. They're creating this cool content online, but then they're not pushing the same exact content out via email to the people that they have their personal information. They have a, an email that can go straight to their phone. I could not agree more. I Social media platforms are going to come and go. Right now, TikTok is the hot one and you can get a lot of growth there and 
that's great. Instagram is great, especially if you started a few years ago, you probably got a solid group of people following you. Facebook still works, but ads are more expensive and not as effective as they used to be at the time of, you know, we're having this conversation. And the the lesson I always try to share with my clients, I worked with a lot of personal brands, people who are trying to use their content, use their ideas, their books to help transform people's lives. We talked all the time about, hey, social media is great, but you've got to build a business on on something that you own. It doesn't make any sense to build an empire on rented property. And if you do, it's just going to exhaust you. I was at a dinner last week with a whole bunch of influencers and was talking to uh, an influencer who's, you know, she's got 250,000 followers. She has a really compelling story. She's great on video. She started to make money through Instagram and she's really worried about what to do next because she's a mom and she's trying to juggle all of these things. And she's basically built almost a prison for herself on Instagram. If she doesn't show up on Instagram, she doesn't make money and she hasn't invested time in building something that she owns, building a website where people can come back and look for those affiliate links that drive income for her, building an email list that she owns that will travel with her. Even a YouTube channel is going to be a lot more effective as a social media platform because it's also a search engine. Pinterest is the same way. And I would imagine between recipes and workout things, there are so many opportunities for people in your listener community that you know, using a Pinterest post to drive people back to a blog post is going to yield a lot more results for you in the long run than trying to go viral on Instagram because you're focusing on a search engine where content can live and continue to thrive and grow. A podcast is amazing, but it's even more amazing if you can tie it to an actual blog post with links where people can opt into your email address, can download something related to the podcast that's going to help them even more in their business. There's so many ways if you can get people back to your website and build a relationship with them, that's so much more effective than focusing all of your energy on the churn that is social media. I'm not saying don't do it, but when you compare it with the things that you own, it's amazing how things take off. Love. Oh my gosh. There's so much good stuff that you just said in all of that. Uh, okay. So I want to draw attention to one thing you said, you know, yeah. search engines related to Pinterest and YouTube. I think a lot of gym owners are not doing that. Aren't they're not yeah. doing anything on Pinterest? We personally don't do anything on Pinterest. That's definitely an opportunity for us. But I also think like as a gym owner, you wear a lot of hats. And if you don't sure. have time, like not don't go on all the platforms and do all the things. Like pick the one thing that you're gonna do really well and then build off of that one thing. You know, YouTube, right? If you're making a video that you're posting on Instagram, can you not put it on YouTube with a link to go to your website to learn more? I think you can and you should. There are a couple of tweaks with YouTube that are going to make that more effective. If you're using, you know, horizontal instead of vertical video, filming that way is going to be helpful. The thing on YouTube, their algorithm is really, really honed in and um, really effective. And if you can post enough things that people are searching for and the video follows up with what's the click, you're trying to earn the click on YouTube. There's a really great book called uh, by Daryl Eves, D-E-R-R-A-L-E-V-E-S. I think it's called the YouTube formula, but I'm not sure. Daryl is like the man behind some massive channels like Mr. Beast. Um, He's worked with almost every YouTube influencer I've ever heard of to help them grow their channel. And one of the things he talks about a lot is the importance of a thumbnail and the importance of the title of the video. And I've shown this to a lot of podcasters I've worked with. You know, a lot of podcasts will do video. Um, And I actually heard a conversation with Lewis Howes, who's a massive podcaster, and Daryl on Clubhouse, back when Clubhouse was really like a thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is still a thing, but like, I felt like everybody was on it for a period of time during the pandemic a couple of years ago. Yep. And they were having this conversation about how Daryl helped Lewis grow his YouTube channel. Lewis mm-hmm. has always put his videos from his podcast that live on his blog and his website mm-hmm. on YouTube, but they weren't doing very well on YouTube. They weren't growing. And he was trying to grow that parallel audience. Mm-hmm. They did two things. They renamed the YouTube videos Yep. So that they were more clickbaitish, you know, I, yep. you know, just want to intrigue people and get them to click and yep. they changed the thumbnail yep. so that instead of the person's name, it was like a picture of the person with the main point that people really want to get from that podcast. I, he, I know he has more than a million. He may be approaching 2 million subs on right now, just making that shift. It's the same content, 
Yeah. All they did was optimize the thumbnail and optimize the title. And if you want to check me on this, go look at his YouTube channel, find the same interview on both his website and his YouTube channel. And you'll see that it's the same content, but all they've done is change the thumbnail and change the title on YouTube. So that's, I think, an easy thing to do because you are wearing so many hats. If you've got some horizontal video that's really great, compelling, transformative, is going to be something people on YouTube are looking for. They're looking for how to do something. I go there all the time when I need to fix something in my house or like <laughs> learn how to do something different. I go to YouTube first and that's usually what people are looking for. And once you can post enough videos like that and get to the point where you're a suggested video on the sidebar of YouTube, man, everything takes off. And that's a great way to earn money, not only from YouTube, but to drive people back to your site so you can get them on your list so upsell them into the other things you're doing and really bring them into your community. Such a good point about the thumbnail stuff. I We started working with a company called VAs for Gyms and um, Scott Rampage has done a lot of stuff with YouTube. He's like, hey, you need to switch the thumbnail on your YouTube. Like it, the writing is too small and mm -hmm. you just need a picture that is like really engaging, really big, and then three to five words that say something and and that's it on the thumbnail. Like people can't see it. If, you know, after he said it, he started talking to me about the why. He's like, Nicole, it's like this big on someone's phone. If you have a yep. bunch of words on there and like a small picture with like a bunch of stuff in the background, it's not going to catch people's eye and they're not going to watch it. And so we actually just switched to all of our thumbnails to be, you know, slightly different and uh, following the same thing that you just said. So I'm yeah, glad. And if you look at YouTubers, I went to, uh, I went to Daryl's conference vid summit a couple of years ago. Well, maybe it's three or four years ago because it was pre pandemic, <laughs> but there was a whole class on thumbnails and everybody that talked about it, like Mr. Beast, who I think he has over 50 million subs. He's, he's, he gets more views than a lot of television networks do on his videos. Wow. He spends a full spend days on a thumbnail, on a title. They'll do that before they even film the video. Mark Rober, same thing. Like there's some really big accounts on YouTube that if you look at what they're doing, that is the thing in common that you'll see. They're really, sometimes it doesn't even have words on it. It's, and sometimes it's not necessarily a still you would find um, organically in the video. They design it so it tells the story of the video mm. and it just, it, it earns those clicks and it allows yeah. more people to find them. Interesting. All right. We could well, talk about that a long time. There's a whole bunch <laughs> to that, but at the very least, that's something that you can do to make that resharing of content more effective on YouTube. I love it. All right. So you brought up something about, you know, going viral on social media. And I, th I actually was on a call with the gym owners yesterday and they were talking about, you know, going viral and all this stuff in their reels, because reels are super popular right now. If you're not doing any reels, you're missing out on an opportunity to get in front of more people organically. Um, they're like, you know, it's not getting a hundred plus thousand views and all of this stuff. I'm like, well, like it's getting 15,000 and the rest mm -hmm. of your videos get 400 views. So in my opinion, you're winning here. <laughs> Talk to me about people that are thinking like, oh, my stuff just needs to go viral to get successful or become successful? Like what's yep. the myth around that? Two things. I've never spoken to a creator who um, just went viral and everything grew. <laughs> they had to have something there to back up the viral video. Like I look at someone like Elise Myers on TikTok. She's a really, she went viral with a couple of videos, but she'd been creating a whole bunch of content that I could continue to go there and watch that was that that matched up with the viral video that made sense that made me want to follow. So you've got to be doing other things. You can't just count on going viral to get eyeballs. Those eyeballs aren't going to stay. And we just went through a whole why are why do we think viral viral is a good thing? Viruses aren't necessarily a good thing. We just went through two years being tortured by a virus, right? Like it comes on really fast. It's really intense and then it goes away. And then people think, oh yeah, remember that one time? They what you want to do if you're trying to transform people's lives, you show up, you create content that matters to the people that you're trying to serve, and you do that again and again and again. The people that you've heard of, the people that you follow, maybe they've had a couple viral videos here and there, but what they're doing is the very non-sexy stuff of showing up and doing the work. And if anybody understands that, I feel like this audience of gym owners and nutrition specialists understand that. Like, that's how, like by small little things every day, great results show up. And that is what this is about too. Going viral might 
get you a few more eyeballs, but it's not necessarily going to be people who are going to stick around. They're going to, you know, you're going to see the eyeballs and then they're going to disappear. So focusing all your energy on going viral is like another one of those things that is just going to exhaust you over time. And why do we say viral? I don't feel like it's a good thing anyway, but if it does happen, you know, make sure you've got a body of work there to take advantage of the eyeballs that come. And hopefully a lot of them will stay. I love it. You know, I've always found personally, like I remember after going through the story brand guide certification, um, you know, we made a downloadable PDF top five mistakes for when people lose weight. And we've done like meal prep guides and a, a bunch of different ones that gym owners using our platform can, can use. But what we found to be the most successful with turning followers to leads to customers is doing virtual nutrition seminars or, you know, videos where we're capturing their email, giving them a mm -hmm. live like seminar or letting them access the recording. If you can get someone to watch you talk about something they care about for 10 to 15 minutes, they are so close to, you know, understanding how you can help them and then mm -hmm. call them to action. But I think so many people just use social media as this like way to get followers and that's all they care about. And they're missing the point of like, hey, you need to get the email. You need to do something, reach out to these people regularly, get video content. It's Video is so much more powerful than words. People yes. can see how passionate you are. If you're not doing video content, start doing it. Could not agree more. I was actually, this 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 dinner I referenced that I went to last week, I um on the other side of me were two creators. Um, they're in business with their sisters. It's called Six Sister Stuff. And, and they were talking about this, that um, the number of followers does not connect to the number of dollars. So you could see someone who has millions of followers. And unless they've done the things that Nicole just said, they're not making millions of dollars. And, and they actually confirmed that they had a million followers either on Instagram or on Facebook. It might've been on Facebook and their business was not doing nearly that well. And when they took control of all of those eyeballs and guided them to their website and had something to sell them, that was a, you know, I think it was a recipe program, probably like a recipe plan. And then awesome. they've continued to create products that they can sell that ties into the content that they share for free. Their business has exploded in the last three or four years. And the difference was not going viral because they already had this huge, massive audience they'd spent years building up when they actually focused that in, got people to their website, got them to buy what they were selling, calling them to action and following through. That is when everything changed for them. Everything changed. So, oh, you know, it stories. really, yeah, follow it. You can be, you can be Instagram rich and dollar poor. Like it, I see it every single day. You can't believe that just because someone has all those followers, they're not, that they're, that they're making money. And I know plenty of people, myself included, who don't have a lot of followers who make multiple six figures a year. So there's really no correlation between the two. The difference is how are you using that content to guide people to go through this transformative experience with you, calling them to action, getting them to buy, continuing to offer value when they're not ready to buy yet. And then when they're ready, they'll, they'll take you up on that offer. I love it. I'd love to spend a couple minutes talking about the common mistakes that you see people make. Uh, when it comes to marketing, specifically putting out content, and we can go with social media. Yeah, I think the biggest mistake is not being consistent. Um, I, I, at the end of the day, the people that I see winning um, and, and growing their businesses when it comes to content are the ones who have figured out how it works for them to produce content that their followers want to see and engage with. Um, and doing it consistently. And, and a lot of that has to do with the platform you're going to work best with, as well as like the Venn diagram of the followers that you are trying to help, the customers you're trying to serve, your ideal clients. If your ideal clients aren't on TikTok, please don't go to TikTok, even <laughs> if it might help your business, you know, or if you have time, great. But if the people that you know you're going to be able to help and serve are on Facebook, then suck it up and show up on Facebook consistently. You, it's, it's just figuring out where the people are, going to where they are, meeting them where they are with content that's going to help transform their lives. That's one of the biggest things you can do. And obviously the opposite is not showing up consistently um, 
and expecting to say something once and have everybody come running and beating a path to your door. That doesn't happen. We feel like we don't want to be salesy and we don't want to talk about the problem we solved that feels negative. And it, 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 it's not what people are more likely to engage with you, spend money with you if you're solving a problem for them. Um, we love to think that people are going to proactively invest in things like health and mindset. And they probably, might, some of them might, but most people invest when there's a pain point, invest when yeah. they have a problem. Yep. Um, and if we're not showing up and saying, hey, I solved this problem, I solved this problem. And here's the person that was successful working with me to solve this yep. problem. Here's a way I can help you solve your problem. All of those things when you're sharing content um, are so valuable and so helpful so that when they're ready, they have a place to go be enlightened and learn more about what you do on your website. So the consistency, um, making sure it all aligns and you're telling the same story and inviting people into that story, sharing the problem that you solve. Um, those are the things that I see, you know, both working and when they don't do that, it just doesn't, it doesn't work for people. Um, yeah. but consistency is the big one and that's always the one no one wants to hear. And I'm sure all of that, that, that resonates with all of you because people don't want to hear that you have to you know, consistently eat healthily and show up every day and take care of your body. Like, that's not fun. Like, give me a pill that's going to make this magical or you do it for me. And it's the right. same with, it's the same with content. You've got to figure out how to show up every day and make it be a part of your business if that's something you're committing to doing. And it's a really great way to bring more leads in the door. You know, blocking out time at the end of the day, like put it on your calendar, yep. like the most important meeting, which you should be doing for yourself anyways, in regards to a workout, you mm -hmm. know, block out some time that you can create content, batch, schedule it out. That That's an option for sure. There's definitely ways to make it a little bit easier. HSN gives all of the gyms and coaches that use our program, the content to push out. So we literally give you video scripts, email content, like all the things. So there's no reason not to use it and push it right. out on a consistent basis. Man, I love that. So many nuggets here. So many things that hopefully inspire gym owners to understand what to push, where to do it, how to repurpose it. I'll give you a couple more tips that we talk about. Uh, for our listeners, if you're making a video on how to do something or three ways or five tips, whatever the case may be, you put it on YouTube, put that link in your WOD tracking software. So all of your members can see that. One of the biggest questions I get from gym owners who've been around for 10, 15 years, like how do I get my existing members bought in with my nutrition coaching program? Put content in front of your members about nutrition on a consistent basis so that they're seeing nutrition help coming from you at some point, they're going to be ready to get started. Mm -hmm. And you want them to come to you versus the online program that's spending a ton of money on ads because they don't have the overhead that you have with your, with your business. So you know, consistency at the end of the, of the day is the driver for sure. I love that. And I think so often we're focused on bringing new people to the table. We don't pay attention to the people who are already there. So sharing that content on a regular basis with the community that's already part of your business is huge. I think that's a great tip. That's something awesome. we, I know I forget about that a lot and I'm trying to, to, to look at that on a regular basis with content I'm creating. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Where can people find you? And then also let's plug StoryBrand too, if they're like, I need more about this framework. Absolutely. Well, I, I work with StoryBrand now. So if you go to storybrand.com, please listen to the podcast. So there's Business Made Simple, which is hosted by Donald Miller, or Marketing Made Simple, which is hosted by Dr. JJ Peterson and April Sunshine Hawkins. They actually, if you want to really get into the meat of how to make this work, how to make StoryBrand a part of your business, they've got some amazing episodes on, they just finished a series on video with several of our guides who specialize in video. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a lot of really actionable, topical um, episodes on how to utilize the story brand framework in your business that I think would be really, really helpful. Um, I'm Macy Robison, M-A-C-Y-R-O-B-I-S-O-N um, on Instagram and pretty much everywhere else on social. Um, but you can find me just talking about story brand and about our amazing certified guides of which Nicole is one who can help you take this framework and utilize it in the different parts of your business so that you can invite customers into a story and help them transform into the people that they are trying to become. I love it. 
I have to plug, um, we are hosting a Healthy Steps Nutrition live workshop in September in Nashville, Tennessee. And we actually have a panel completely filled with story brand certified guides on how to tell compelling stories. So this is something that is vital to your business to be successful. You have to create a clear message of how you mm -hmm. help people and how you can transform their lives. So if you're really struggling with this or you're like, hey, I'm not struggling, but I know I can do better. Come to the live workshop, listen to this panel discussion, talk to these story brand certified guides. There's a panel full of them that are going to be there all weekend to help gym owners because at the end of the day, we're all in this business to help people. And if we yeah. can be more effective with how we can help them, we're all going to be able to have a greater impact. So we'd love Amazing. to see you in Nashville. Macy, thank you so much for coming on today's podcast. And I'm excited for more people to learn more about StoryBrand. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Macy. So many amazing nuggets in there talking about creating content. Here's the deal. Creating content takes time, but it is worth your time because you want people to feel like they already know you before they come into your facility. You definitely want people to understand that you help them through nutrition, fitness, and accountability before you have a free intro with them. If you think you're going to get people signed up for nutrition, fitness, and accountability, paying two and a half times what your gym membership rate is, the first time that they come in hearing about nutrition, you are mistaken. People need to see things multiple times before they take action. That means you need to be talking about nutrition regularly. But here's the deal. You can create a piece of content and put it a million different places. Let me give you an example. People love healthy recipes easy recipes. Maybe you go to the healthysubsnutrition.com website and you find one of my favorite easy recipes, egg roll in a bowl. You make a reel talking about here's how to make a super easy recipe, three ingredients, less than 10 minutes. You upload that video to YouTube. You embed that YouTube link into an email. You share that YouTube link on social media, on Facebook, in a Facebook group, and you put it in your workout tracking. We use SugarWatt at our gym. And we use the announcement section to put any recipe videos or nutrition tip videos so that all of our members can see nutrition coming from us on a regular basis. Yes, most people do nutrition with us or all of them have done nutrition with us at some point, but you want people to see nutrition coming from you guys on a regular basis. HSN Mentoring provides content for gym owners, nutrition tips, email content, video scripts. We even provide virtual nutrition seminars that you can take and chop up into little pieces for even more video content. It takes time to create this stuff and I think it is a huge benefit for our mentoring clients. So if you are a mentoring client, you better be using it because it is gonna help you be able to establish authority related to nutrition. All right, I promised at the beginning of this episode, I will give you the four questions you need to be asking during testimonial videos. Here's the deal. You need other people telling your future clients how awesome you are. And if you just ask someone to write a Google review or to share their story in a video, they might not really get to the point very quickly. And you only have about 90 seconds, maybe two minutes to get to the point. So here are the four questions that you want to be asking. These questions come from Reverb. They come from the owner of Reverb, Clark. He's a great friend of ours, and they do all of our interviews for success stories from gym owners to coaches. Over the past year, we've traveled to dozens of gyms around the U.S. and captured stories of gym owners, clients, and, and coaches. If you're curious what this looks like as an end product, go to the blog uh, with this episode and you can see. All right, let's answer these four questions or not, let me tell you these four questions. Grab a pencil, write these down or open up the notes section in your phone. The first question, before starting, insert your gym name, what were you looking for? Right? So what were they looking for when they came to your gym? Then the next question, what kept you from getting there? So what were the obstacles in the way? If you don't talk about the problems, people are going to stop listening. You have to talk about the problems. Were they overwhelmed because they didn't know what to do? Was there too, too much going on? They didn't make time. They didn't have priority. They just were un unsure of how to have the right plan for them. Next question. How did insert gym name, your business name, help you overcome what you were, what you were, your obstacle was to get to what you're looking for? So let me rephrase that. 
How did the gym name help you? How did your business help you? Specifically, how did a coach help you get to where you wanted to go? In this, you want to be detailed. You want them to say things like accountability, support, customization, keeping me on track, giving me simple tips, helping me with a simple, actionable plan, right? And then finally, my favorite question, what does life look like now that you've gotten there? Now that you have achieved results, overcome the problem, what does life look like now? And here's where we can lean into the results, but not only the scale, but also the non-scale victories, right? So do you have more energy? Are you a better mom? Is it easier for you to get up and down? Is it easier for you to sleep? Do you have, is your mood better? Is your confidence better? Are you fitting into your clothes? What is different now that you're prioritizing your health and wellness? These questions are what you can use to frame a success story. And my recommendation when you get these, have pe- stand next to the camera, ask them one question, let them respond, let them work it out, then ask them to condense it so that it's short and concise because people like to talk, then ask the next question and hire a videographer or someone to do the editing for you to chop it all up to make one simple video. Again, if you are curious about what this looks like, go to the, click the link in the show notes and go to our blog, growyournutritionbusiness.com. And you can see these success stories at the bottom of the blog associated with this podcast episode. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a review that really helps this podcast to reach more people, especially since I took a little bit of a break, but I promise we're back on track. Um, Next week, we have Lindsay McDonald coming on. We are talking all about how to use a challenge to build an ongoing coaching program. You don't want to miss that episode. See you back here next week.